This is a universal smartphone adapter to eyepieces, typically used with a telescope or a microscope or maybe a pair of binoculars or a spotting scope. Now, this costs $36. Um, I was provided it for free to review. They have not paid me for my review, and so my opinions remain my own. Now, in the package, you get a Bluetooth remote camera shutter, which is important because when you have your smartphone attached to something, you don't want to be tapping the smartphone to take a picture because that wiggles everything. Uh, it includes a manual of how to use this guy, with some tips, and then the device itself. So this looks very similar to several other universal smartphone mounts I've seen, um, but it works a little bit differently here. It has a lot of extra features on it, um, and it has a very nice, easy-to-use knob that will pull this in place. So you essentially turn the knob, and it pulls this down. It's ratcheting, so it goes in one direction, and then it latches in place. To get it back out, you have to pull the knob up, and then that disengages the mechanism so you can slide this back manually. Um, so this makes it easy to set it up where you want it, and then very quickly clamp it in place. It also has this little shield, which is to shield any other light coming in there. I'm not sure if that's going to be strictly necessary for um, outdoor use at night with astronomy. It might be something you're going to be used more in the daytime. Um, now, the actual cell phone clamping bit here looks to be very similar to many others. You have a screw here that will adjust the width and you can clamp your cell phone in that. And then you have a screw here and there is a couple of different mounting points on this guy. So there's one on the bottom and there's two on the back. Um, so you could theoretically take this off and use it as a tripod mount for a cell phone as well. Um, and you can basically move this guy around. Now my cell phone is long enough and I have buttons kind of low enough on the side that I want to be clamping it down low so I may have to take this little screw out and move it to the next one down so that I can get this pretty far away from the center here. So it has basically X and Y adjustment with this screw here is you can you know turn your phone side to side to get the camera lined up and move it up and down to line things up. This one does not have a Z-axis correction, so many of them don't. This one also does not. Um, so there's no Z-axis here, so your cell phone just has to happen to be the right distance from your eyepiece. And so about the best thing you can do there is, you know, as you're putting this on your eyepiece, you can adjust how far down it is before you clamp it in place um, to get that right. Um, so this main piece here is a solid piece of cast metal. Now the phone clamp is plastic and some of the moving pieces in here are plastic. Um, you know, so these guys here are plastic, but the main shell is a solid piece of metal. Um, it feels pretty heavy, so I would say, you know, kind of steel or cast iron as opposed to aluminum in there. I need a magnet to check that for sure. All right, so despite the weight in my hand, this does appear to be a solid aluminum casting as opposed to steel. The only uh, metal here are these screws that um, I go in there, but the actual, you know, main body here does appear to be aluminum. So let me adjust this out for my phone. Now you do need to manually back it out. It's not like a spring clamp where it's super easy to put your phone in. On the other hand, once you get your phone in there and clamp it in, you're pretty confident that it's held nicely. Um, so we do need to screw for a while to get this to fit my phone here. All right, so it has a pretty wide range of adjustability there. I just had to screw for a while to get it to fit my phone. And I'm clamping this as close to this volume up down button as I can get without actually triggering that button. Because in the past, my experience has been it's difficult to get my phone's camera lined up with an eyepiece when I'm clamping this low. But if I clamp any higher, hitting those buttons is a problem. So I have my phone in a case and it's being around that case well enough that I'm not too worried about this. And so it looks like here I will certainly be able to get my phone in the center of where my eyepiece is on this guy. So we're going to try this out with an eyepiece here in the daytime just to get a feel for how it works. 
you know, I put this guy down, clamp it in. It's fitting pretty well there. Now when I put the shield on, it looks like I got that eyepiece a little bit high. Um, so this shield won't go on with my eyepiece set on that far. Um, I think I'm just going to use this without the shield since I'm using it for astronomy. I'm not certain if the shield is going to be necessary. So let's see about aligning this guy. And this is a 6 millimeter eyepiece, so it has a relatively small exit pupil. Um, so let's see. Generally, I recommend doing this in the daytime and moving your phone um, around so you can find the exit pupil in the daytime. So that wasn't too bad. I have the exit pupil centered there. I do need to tighten it down though. And so let's see how it moves when I tighten this thing down. So as I tighten it down, I'm getting closer. Um, and the exit pupil moved down just slightly. So let me loosen that up and see if I can move this guy. All right, so the exit pupil's up at the top now, and when I tighten it down, it stays at the top. So now I have to move it. Just slightly. Alright, so that's doing a pretty good job of holding my phone steady here. So this solid aluminum body is definitely helpful in maintaining alignment once you clamp it down. You know, I mean, you're going to have to do some adjustments to get it clamped in the right spot. But, you know, I feel pretty confident that I could take this entire assembly and then set it into my telescope and get a pretty good view through that eyepiece on my camera here. And we have a relatively parallel alignment there between the camera and the eyepiece. I do like how easy it is to take it off. So when I wanted to take this eyepiece off, all I did was I pulled that up and I just used the eyepiece and kind of, you know, pushed, pushed this thing up a little bit. And with this knob pulled up, it just came out. And I could imagine since I set this up for a 1.25 eyepiece, as long as my other eyepieces have a similar diameter on the outside here, um, I could th theoretically put this on a different eyepiece tighten it down, and the center point should be pretty darn close to that same location. Now obviously if your eyepieces have different outside diameters here, you're going to have to readjust your camera. Alright, so I don't see any problems with its use. It looks very straightforward. I'm going to have to take it out and wait for a clear night and use my telescope with it to try it with a couple of different eyepieces and get a feel for if it's any better than the other ones in the similar style that I've used in the past. All right, we got a clear night. I tried this out. I'm pretty happy with this guy. This guy clamps the phone very well. Um, I really like this thing here for taking it off the eyepiece and then putting it back onto the eyepiece. And so this guy clamps your phone. I have to put the eyepiece in, lock it down. I point this at a red light and then I maneuver the phone until I get this image centered in the phone camera. And obviously that's easier with a lower power eyepiece. The bigger your exit pupil, the easier it is to line up your phone camera to it. Um, I did get this thing mostly lined up with a high magnification eyepiece I used for planetary imaging. So I'll show a few pictures of that. Um, you know, it's never going to be great, but it worked okay. Um, Obviously, if you have a DSLR with a T-tube adapter, that just works a little better than, you know, holding your cell phone up against the eyepiece. Uh, it does not have a Z-axis adjustment, and I feel like that's the next step up is, you know, the XY worked okay. It takes a, it's finicky, but once you get it locked in place, this guy does a real good job of you can take your phone and this guy off, look through the eyepiece, and then when you want to take another picture, you can hold this up to the eyepiece and just twist 
and that guy locks into the eyepiece and is generally still centered where you left it from the last time because you lock your phone in with the screw here, you lock this guy down with the screw there, and it's very rigid, it's not going to move. And this guy here auto centers that eyepiece very well. So when you clamp it onto the eyepiece, it pulls the eyepiece back into the same position it was in. So for putting it on and taking it off, um, this mechanism worked very well. And that's really the big difference from some other models that have a screw up here where you have to screw and screw and screw to pop it in and out. I used the shade. Um, it didn't get in the way. I, don't, I didn't notice that it was blocking light particularly, so I'm not sure if it's necessary to use the shade. Um, but you certainly can, and it did not get in the way of anything for me. So what I'm comparing this to is my previous eyepiece adapter, which is the Celestron branded one. It's also metal. It also has the screw in and out um, cell phone holder. They're almost identical construction. They're not quite the same, but essentially they work the same way. Um, the difference here is this guy has this little plastic shield. As I said, I used it. It worked fine. It didn't get in the way. I'm not guaranteeing that it goes any better than no shield, but it certainly didn't hurt. And the other one is this easy grabby, easy release mechanism. And I did prefer that over the Celestrons, you know, because with this guy here, you got to hold it on your eyepiece and you got to spin this thing and spin this thing and spin this thing until it grabs it. With this, it was very much, you know, I could put this over the eyepiece on my telescope, clamp it down and achieve imaging right there. And then I'd have to release it and so you pull the button out, just kind of slide it down and then pull it off. So I could put this on and take it off multiple times. With this guy here, um, generally I would take the eyepiece out of the telescope, put the eyepiece up, and then tighten it down. Um, so I'm going to be switching over to using this as my telescope eyepiece adapter. That being said, I've never really had great luck with these guys. It's better than nothing, but I do recommend you investigate having like a DSLR camera with a T-tube because that's really the way to go for taking pictures through a telescope in my opinion or a dedicated photography, you know, astrophotography or planetary camera. Now neither one of these have Z-axis adjustment and I've seen some more expensive fancier models that have Z-axis adjustment and that's really the only feature I think either one of these really lacks. Now I did not test the Bluetooth camera shutter. I have my own that's already paired with my camera. It has a neck lanyard that I wear around my neck. Um, so I can't say anything good or bad about this guy. It looks like kind of your generic Bluetooth camera shutter.